and they found in 2008 that it just collapsed as a result of fires. Well, if you really believe that, wouldn't you want to investigate it instead of shutting it down? Wouldn't you really want to have a thorough investigation? Wouldn't you want to know why those little bit, how did it catch fire to that degree? We've seen skyscrapers burning for days that are steel skyscrapers that did not come down. So let's have a little bit of a discussion about that. But what is going on now is the product of that lie. After they have taken down Iraq with lies, they've destroyed that country, they've cost more soldiers' lives in Iraq have been lost than died in 9-11. Who knows how many Iraqis have died in that country. That country is being destroyed, has been destroyed. Now they're bringing about the collapse of America. And it's the institution that was created as, a res as an answer to their false flag at 9-11. Just look at the headlines from the Drudge Report today. Pelosi is going to greet new arrivals at the border. She's very happy with that. And, of course, now the First Lady of Honduras is coming to tour immigration shelters in Texas. Do you get the idea that this is NAFTA, that this is not America anymore? That they've all agreed that this is just fine? We've got uh, mothers being telling people, get across and you stay. Your children can go to school. And, of course, the New York City uh, is wanting these immigrants. They can't get enough of this voting block in New York because they want to have total control there. They're going to issue ID cards. They're setting up public defender's office to fight deportations, even though most of these people are not going to show up to their trials. Uh, they've got a backlog of, somebody reported yesterday, 360,000. And, of course, that's going to take years to go through that backlog, even if they show up. And, of course, we see... Immigration activists are going to the White House. They're concerned about harsh anti-immigrant rhetoric, it says. They think that this is an excuse not to act on immigration reform. Well, you know, let's, let's channel Harry Reid and Hillary Clinton. What difference does it make? What difference does immigration reform make? I mean, is it going to make, if they reform the immigration laws, will Obama obey them now? If they reform the immigration laws, will Homeland Security obey them? You know, will the illegal immigrants obey the new immigration laws? They're not obeying the laws now. Why would we bother to reform them? Reforming the immigration laws is just code word for amnesty. They want to increase the welfare state. They want to change the demographics of this country. They want to bring in the youngest people that they can so that they will become indebted to the United States government. So they will do whatever the U.S. government wants when you talk about bringing in the U.N. to establish martial law in the United States, you don't need to bring in foreign troops. If you can bring in, if you can open up the borders and bring in young people from Central and South America, this is a tactic that all dictators have always known. You get the children at an early age and they're theirs for life. Hitler said that about the Hitler youth. This is something that goes all the way back to Plato's Republic. Plato's Republic, he said, well, we're going to have a society that essentially has uh, three levels. We're going to have the rulers, we're going to have the guardians, we're going to have everybody else. And we are going to make sure that no one knows who their mothers and fathers are. Their only loyalty is going to be to the state. So we are going to make sure that uh, that they're removed from their parents, that we have these wild orgies. We uh, sexualize the culture in the sense that no one knows who their children are. They're raised by the state, and they have no loyalties to their family. Because when you have loyalties to your family, when you have a cultural background there, that checks what the government can do. They don't want to see that. Now, and of course, the White House press secretary said just yesterday that uh, they're not going to wait around and sit uh, sit around and wait for Congress to write new laws. Of course they're not. They really don't care what those laws would be in the first place. And we also got some news about uh, the police state. Uh, we've got Keith Alexander has now made the jump to highly paid consultant. You know, it's not just Hillary Clinton that gets the big bucks when she speaks. Uh, he is now offering himself out. First, he put himself out for a million dollars a month as a consultant. Now he's putting himself out as 600000 You're getting a discount. That's a pretty hefty discount. It's about a 40% discount. This is a guy who is, of course, was just recently at Bilderberg, talking to those guys there. And actually, he had gone to Bilderberg in 2012, speaking privately with all these people while he was still head of the NSA. And Alan Grayson, a congressman, has called him out and he says, well, if he's got anything useful to offer at that price, maybe he's peddling national security secrets. Because having the Snowden leaks happen on your watch isn't much of a resume builder. We'll be right back. 
When the day comes where the world changes forever, forever, you can be ready at a moment's notice. With Survivalist Camps, the ultimate fully functional off-the-grid survival bug-out house that's completely mobile and ready to go. All the comforts of an RV, but custom-built to outlast any other trailer. Learn more at survivalistcamps.com. Due to overwhelming response, limited inventory is available. Be ready with survivalistcamps.com. Survivalist Camps, providing your basic needs to survive. Attention all radio listeners. Survival Life is giving away free credit card knives exclusively to our radio listeners here today. Visit mycreditcardknife.com to see this covert knife in action and claim yours for free. It's the same knife you've seen in the airline magazines for $29.95, but today it's yours free. Just pay shipping and handling. Mycreditcardknife.com, mycreditcardknife.com. Go now. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. Most people know that iodine deficiency has been a crisis around the world. Iodine is key to so many of the body's functions, especially the thyroid. I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off Super Detox Special at InfoWarsLife.com. A 30-day GMO-free emergency food supply for only $99 at 30dayfoodsupply.com. You can purchase Oregon Trail Foods' one-month supply of high-quality, nutritious, and healthy emergency meals. For less than $100, these vegetarian meals are naturally high in fiber, carbs, and protein, and they're packed with oxygen absorbers in Mylar pouches. They're completely free of any artificial flavors and colorings, have a 20-year shelf life, and take up to 70% less space than number 10 cans. They even offer a gluten free option. Oregon Trail Foods and 30dayfoodsupply.com keep prices low by buying directly from the producers in Oregon and then passing the savings to you. Purchase a 30-day 90-serving emergency food supply for only $99 this month and $10 ships your entire order. Visit the website at 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 541-229-0010. That's 30dayfoodsupply.com where they make preparedness affordable. 30dayfoodsupply.com. Do you ever feel like you live in an alternate universe? As the stock market hits new highs, the middle class are dying. Manipulated financial markets and economic figures, chaos on our border, China and Russia bypassing the dollar. Life is getting ready to change. You need to prepare to thrive in the new economy. Go to babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789. That's 888-507-8789. Listen up, all you preppers and survival enthusiasts. Sigma 3 Survival School has a brand new survival instructor training program that will teach you everything you need to know about survival and then license you to teach our survival programs so you can make a substantial profit from it. If you have always wanted to learn to be completely self-reliant and would like to make money at it, then check out Sigma 3 Survival School Survival Instructor Program at survivalschool.us or call 479-561-3886 today. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. I'm going to be joining the next segment with Paul Joseph Watson, and we have some optimistic news there. But before we get to that, let's give you the bad news here. Oregon is going to be celebrating Independence Day with a no-refusal blood checkpoint. They're renaming the 4th of July weekend the No Refusal Weekend. So watch out if you're in Oregon. This is a story from Steve Watson that's up on InfoWars.com. Here's their clip. 
In the past, Eugene police officer Ryan Stone says if someone was pulled over under the suspicion of driving while intoxicated, one could refuse a breath test, but would face fines and a year-long suspension of their license. Under no refusal, Stone says police will be able to file for a search warrant through an on-call judge and draw blood at the station. The only difference now is that we have a better tool available to us for when that happens to follow it up and still obtain the evidence that we're looking for to uh, successfully prosecute the person. But not everyone is comfortable with this new practice, which for now will only happen on July 4th. If you're doing something wrong, you should be penalized for it. But if you're not doing anything wrong, then it's an infringement. That's intense. That's intense. I mean, it's it's definitely invasive, more so invasive even than just like breathing, you know, like giving a breathalyzer. Oregon's ACLU Executive Director Dave Fidanke says this has long been a practice police have been allowed to do, but have rarely done. He says as long as they apply for for a warrant, it legally won't infringe on anyone's rights. Going that one step further and uh, getting a warrant for a blood draw, if they have probable cause and approval of the judge, uh, that's, that's the right way to go about it, in our view. Yeah, now, there course, you go. You that's to, the ACLU uh, coming in and saying, hey, that's fine. You just get on the phone and you tell the judge and he rubber stamps whatever you tell him. I have a problem with that. We've had numerous examples of people being having blood drawn from them across the country, finding that they were completely sober. So this whole thing about pulling people over, and they've redefined what drunk driving is to the point where I think a lot of people who are really are dangerously drunk, who are chronic repeaters, are getting off because so many people understand that they've lowered so many times the definition of what a drunk driver is that uh, they are, they're giving these people a pass on this. I've seen it myself when I was in traffic court for other things. I've seen people getting a pass on it just going before the judge. So this is a very dangerous thing. This is how our rights disappear. We're going to have Paul Joseph Watson on in the next segment talking about a police officer who actually stands up for people's rights. But before we get to that, while we're on cars... I talked yesterday about the coming computer-controlled cars, computer-driven cars that will really be controlled by the government. They will control when and where you can go, keeping certain areas off limits to you. And let's think about how that's going to be sold to us. One of the ways it's going to be sold to us is it's going to protect us from these dangerous drivers. And certainly, we're more than willing to give up our freedom and our rights to have checkpoints where they stop and inspect you on the road as you're going without any probable cause. It's not like you're weaving across the road. These are checkpoints where they stop people. And we say, that's fine. We'll do that for safety. Well, what they're doing is they're offering these computer-driven cars out there. Google is telling people it's going to reduce the number of deaths and accidents by 90%. It's like, really? Will it? They're going to put you in these cars with no steering and no brakes, completely under computer control, well, how is that working out for us now? Well, they tell us that there's so many systems that are already in our cars. We have a lot of systems that are operating automatically, anti-lock brakes or airbags, for example. And now we have a story from Reuters, an exclusive airbag accident and a lawsuit led to the GM Cruise recall. An accident that left a Georgia woman blind in one eye and a subsequent lawsuit led to General Motors recall of about 33,000 Chevy Cruises in North America for potentially defective airbags. So are we going to hear about that when the computer crashes, literally crashes your car, when you get the blue screen of death or it drives you, the navigation software starts driving you in circles or drives you into uh, a lake? Of course, you're not going to hear about that. That's going to be covered up, but they will use that as leverage to get you into a car to make you helpless, to make you dependent, to keep you controlled, to control the transportation nodes. And we see this article that's up on Infowars.com about artificial intelligence. And of course, remember that this is really, there's also an artificial intelligence aspect to these quote-unquote self-driving cars. They're not self-driving cars. Self-driving cars are what you have today when you drive yourself. These are going to be computer-driven, government-controlled cars. And of course, when they're in a situation where they have an ac a potential accident, they're already talking about the kind of ethical trade-offs that these AI units within your cars are going to have to make. Are they going to, if, some, if a pedestrian pushing a baby carriage is crossing in front of you, is it going to swerve you into a truck because there's only one person in your car? 
Are you going to give that kind of control to your computer? Are we going to have engineers who start looking at ethics? Engineers who aren't going to make killer robots. And that's what this guy confronted the people at Google about. Because, of course, Google now owns all the big DARPA robot projects. We'll be right back with Paul Joseph Watson and some We're good news. March, Stay with us. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network.